What is up everyone? It is Rachel. Welcome back to my channel. And so today is a super exciting video because today I am going to be talking about UC Berkeley's resident assistant, also known as RA interview advice. So I have a few other RA related videos on my channel, which I will have links down below. And if you're new to my channel, hello, my name is Rachel. I graduated from Berkeley in the class of 2020, where I double majored in cognitive science and legal studies and currently right now I'm working full-time at a law firm and then part-time as an admissions reader. During my time at Berkeley I was a resident assistant my sophomore year and then a senior resident assistant SRA my junior and senior years. In addition to that I was also a residential life hiring and training coordinator so I saw all of the front end of the R interview process as an RA and then I saw all of the back end of the RA interview process as a hiring and training coordinator. And also if you didn't get invited to do the RA interview and you're looking for a position that offers room and board as compensation, you should definitely check out the Residential Life website under the Residential Student Coordinators, also known as RSC positions. Those positions also offer room and board as compensation. So jumping in, the first thing that I'm going to be talking about with the RA interview is the RA interview format. So for all of you that were invited to interview, congratulations, that is so exciting. The email that they sent you has a lot of really, really good information on it. So I would personally read that and follow all of the instructions on there in terms of Zoom etiquette, as well as preparing for the interview because it definitely just tells you all of the information. So here in this video, I'm going to go a little more in depth about the different processes in this interview. So as the email stated, the interview is online via Zoom and it is an hour and 45 minutes long. So for me, working as an RA and a hiring and training coordinator, all of the interview processes that I was involved with were in-person interviews. So all of the information that I'm going to share might change a little bit because all of the interviews are via Zoom. So definitely keep that in mind. But with the hour and 45 minute interview, it's not really like you're being interviewed for the entire hour and 45 minutes, but it's more like you're being examined, interviewed for like an hour, an hour and 15 minutes, and the other time built in there is used for the people that are interviewing you to discuss, share their thoughts, and then take notes down. So with this, the interview is split into the two parts. The individual interview and then the group interview, you may start the interview process at either of these sections. So you may start in the group interview and then go into the individual interview second, or you may start in the individual interview and then go to the group interview second. So really, it's sort of random which one you start with, whether it is individual or group. Back in my day, we would randomly split up the people that signed up for the interview interview slot into smaller groups labeled like A, B, C, D, and each of these smaller groups would have four people in them, which correlates to the number of tables that there are for the individual interview section because you are getting asked questions based on those four topics that they gave you in the initial email. So then with that, like A and B would do the group interview together, and then C and D would do the group interview together. It's like like eight people together for that group interview. So that is some general format information. Now I'm going to go a little bit more in depth into both the individual and group interview. So on my channel, I also have a general interview tips video. So I'll have that linked down below and you should definitely check it out. So in that email that they sent to you, it has the sections of topics that are going to be asked about in the interview. So from the email, the sections are crisis response, risk management, 
social justice, understanding, seeking support, communication, and community development. So usually with these topic sections that they gave you, you will have two questions asked per topic, so eight questions total. You got about five minutes per section, so five minutes to answer the two questions for the section that you're at. If this time limit has changed, they will definitely let you know at the start of the interview. Back when interviews were in person, there would be a set of four tables around the room for the individual interview. You would go up to one of the tables, so the social justice table, answer those two questions in the time allotted. After time is up, then you would move on, go to the next table, and then you would answer the two questions about the next topic, say community development. So now that interviews are via Zoom, they might be separating you into different breakout rooms, where each breakout room would be each individual section topic, so social justice, crisis response, and then after the time allotted, you would go to the next breakout room to answer the next section's questions. With each section, you might have some time after you've answered the two questions, so you want to go into the interview with questions prepared for the interviewers. And typically for the individual interview, at each section table, so for each section topic, there would be one current hall staff member and then one professional staff member at each table who are interviewing you. So if you have some time after the section's questions, then you want to ask your questions so it's not like super awkward, you're just sitting there with nothing else to say, but because these are current hall staff members and professional staff members, have some questions prepared and you can gain some really, really great insight because these are people who are currently in the role. And so the two people interviewing you for each section, they would be taking notes, writing down your answers, some things that you talked about well, and then also some areas to improve upon. After that, then they would give you a numerical score for each section of the individual interview for each table of questions that you're answering. With that, because they give you the four topics that you are going to be asked questions about, think about these topics and prepare some examples and think about how you would answer these kinds of questions. So I would look up popular behavioral and situational questions that are typically asked at interviews so that you can prepare answers and practice based on those popular questions. I would also definitely recommend reading and reviewing the job description on the Residential Life website so that you can thoroughly understand what the resident assistant role entails and for questions like crisis management, the RA job description does talk about things like crisis management, so that would be a good way to think of, oh, what are some kinds of questions that I can make up or what kinds of questions could they ask me based off of the job description. For example, some popular behavioral and situational questions include, tell us about a time that you worked on a team. What role do you usually play on teams? Tell us about a time that you you responded to a conflict. What did you do? Walk us through your thought process. What does social justice mean to you? And for situational questions, different situations that you might be placed as an RA, for example, say you're a resident assistant and it's Halloween time and you see a resident dressed up in a costume that is cultural appropriation. What would you do in this situation? How would you approach the resident? What kinds of conversations would you have with your floor? So example questions like that that would be on those popular behavioral questions list and then going into the job description, that's how you can create random practice questions that relate specifically to the job. So I would definitely recommend putting in the time for the individual interview to practice as well as draft up some sample questions and practice answers so that you're prepared, you're thinking about examples, and you know the RA job. So that was a little bit about the individual interview, now going into the group interview process. 
For the RA group interview, you are usually given a task that you are going to be talking about with your group and then you prepare a quick presentation. So you may have like 15 to 20 minutes for the group part and then you may have like five minutes for the presentation part. And similar to the individual interview, in the group interview, you would also have current professional staff and current hall staff members take taking notes, as well as scoring you during the group section. So the task that they give you in the group interview is usually very open-ended and it's something that you have to talk about and plan. So for example, it could be something like you are an RA and you're planning some kind of event. What kind of event would you plan? What are some things that you need to think about in the event planning process, such as like accessibility, any kind of dietary restrictions if you're going to be buying food, what kinds of events do you even want to hold, what activities do you want to have at this event, what time and day do you want to have the event on. So basically talking through all of these different things that go into being an RA and planning an event. I think when I was doing the RA interview, our group interview task was that we were going to be building a brand new door on Berkeley's campus. So we had to consider things like the location of our dorm, what kind of amenities did we want to have, what kind of room types did we want to have in the dorm, as well as the layout of the building, a bunch of things like that. So basically we had the time and we would all talk about what kind of dorm we wanted to build. So as you can see with these two prompts, there's not really like a right answer or a wrong answer but basically seeing how well you can work in a team and what kind of ideas and thoughts you're bringing to the table. So some tips for the group interview. There's nothing that you really can practice for the group interview, but it's basically how well can you work in a team, communication skills with other people, because in the RA role, you would be working on a team of other resident assistants, as well as you would have a supervisor, and you would be working with a bunch of residents, your students. And so with that, I would say the biggest thing for the group interview is to contribute to the conversation, but do not contribute too much that you are totally dominating the conversation. You're not letting anyone else talk, but you are talking for 15 minutes straight. Like that would be very, very bad, but you want to talk enough, see how many times other people are talking and gain it like that. Like I said, 15 to 20 minutes for eight students to share their ideas. It's not a long time, so you really want to be cognizant of how much you are talking in compared to other students so that you aren't totally taking up all of the conversation time, but also make sure that you do talk and you do put your voice out there to share your ideas. Another thing that you want to do is to be friendly with everyone in your group. So you could say something like, good idea, name of person, like I think XYZ is an interesting idea, I think adding on to that I would also like to see XYZ in our dorm or in this event that we're planning. So you can build off of other people's ideas. You do want to be careful because you don't want to just say yeah like thumbs up person, I really like your idea and that is your entire comment, that is all of your participation. You don't want to do that because you aren't giving anything into the conversation, you're not sharing your ideas. So when you are talking, you do want to give and contribute to the conversation and share some of your ideas rather than just saying, I agree, period, that's it, next person starts talking. With this also, you don't really want to shoot down anyone's ideas because when you're building a dorm, when you're creating an event, these are very, very open-ended, so there's not necessarily a wrong answer, so you really shouldn't say to your group member, like, that idea sucks.
sucks. Let's think of another idea. But maybe if you're building a dorm and someone says something like, let's only have elevators in the dorm and no staircases, that might be, you know, it's a uh, idea. It's not necessarily wrong, but if you're building a dorm without any staircases, that could be problematic. So as a comment, you might say something like, that's a great idea, person's name. However, having only elevators in our dorm could be a fire hazard considering our dorm is 10 stories high. So we should include some staircases in our dorm just in case of a fire. Something like that, you know, you aren't shooting down someone's idea, but if someone has a little iffy idea, you might want to steer the conversation away from that idea. So finally, talking a little bit about the RA waitlist, I would say if you're interested in the RA position at all, then you should opt into the RA waitlist. So I was actually on the RA waitlist initially, then I was offered an RA position, and typically each year everyone on the waitlist does get offered a position. It might just take a little bit of time. So like for me, I was offered a job at the end of the semester, so at the end of spring semester, that is fairly early to be getting off of the waitlist. You might get off of the waitlist in the summertime, you might get off of the waitlist at fall training before the semester starts, you could even get off of the waitlist during the middle of fall semester, and people might be graduating in the fall or studying abroad next spring. So typically at the end of the fall semester, then more RA positions open up, which is when they would go into the waitlist. So if you are interested in the job, I would stay on the waitlist and just be cautious because you could get offered a position at any point in time. So be prepared with that with your current housing situation. And finally, with the RA waitlist, the RA waitlist isn't ranked in any way, but it's literally just the list of the students. So it's not like the person at the top of the RA waitlist would be offered a job first and then the person at the bottom would be offered a job last, but any person on the waitlist could get offered a job at any point in time because it's not ranked, but it's up to the resident director whose dorm has an RA opening, then they would go into the waitlist document, review all of the interview scores and notes, and then they would select the person that they want to offer the RA spot for. So the waitlist isn't ranked or tiered in any way, so definitely opt into the waitlist if you are interested in becoming an RA. So that is some background information and tips for the Berkeley Resident Assistant interview. Definitely if you have any questions, please leave a comment down below. As always, thank you all so so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a big thumbs up to help me out with the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos from me. Thanks so much again and I will see you all next time.